<laughs> Welcome to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba. Thanks for joining us. I've got Philip Larson, president of Axolotl Biologic. All right, Philip, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Talk to me about regenerative medicine, how it helps patients heal faster and sometimes even avoid surgery. So yeah, um, stem cell therapies aren't necessarily cellular therapies. Um, these regenerative therapies are uh, basically we're able to take cellular products that are from derived from amnion derived stem cells um, and use that cellular communication to promote healing and re restoration of tissues within your own body. Okay, let's drill down into that. I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure we get this. That's a that's a high level view. But the re how does it the regenerative medicine actually work. I mean, that's what it does, but how does it work? How does it work? So it, a variety of growth factors will promote um, healing similar to like if you're wanting to restore hair follicles and be able to restore hair, um, there's a growth factor called WNTS, W-N-T, uh, plural S, um, that will promote hair follicle restoration. Um, and then like uh, there's a, another set of growth factors that help with that as well, which are uh, angiopoietin-2 and vascular endothelial growth factor, which promote neovascularization, which is uh, new microvasculature uh, restored into the scalpel, the, not scalpel, the scalp of uh, the hair. And so that nutrient supply plus the wind growth factors will help cause restoration of hair. What about, um, let's say, cosmetic or, or, you know, people are working with wrinkles or they want to do something else. Well, tell me about that part. So there's growth factor uh, beta. There's, there's a couple of different um, growth factors that help not only cause cell proliferation, but enhance and remodel and um, uh, create collagen uh, regrowth in the tissue. So um, again, it's just these different growth factors that stimulate your own cells to, to beef up the scaffolding between the cells and be able to uh, cause cell proliferation. Um, our future generation technologies have a, a uh, protein called tropolastin. It's a precursor to elastin. And so you've got um, some brick and mortar behind you. Um, and in that brick and mortar, um, it, you wouldn't just stack bricks, right? Or else they don't have the right mechanical properties. Wind can blow through it. You can push it over and topple it over. Um, so you need that mortar. And the mortar is made up of three things, sand, lye, and water. If you leave one out, you, you get something else entirely. You leave out water, you get dusty sand, you, you leave out um, lye, you have the beach, right? Um, same thing with the scaffolding between your cells. Your cells can't do work without the scaffolding between it, um, that mortar, and it's made up of collagen, fibrin, and elastin. And uh, you stop producing elastin at the age of uh, 12, approximately, give or take, and by the age of 70, over half of it's gone, and the half that's left is like that bungee cord you left out in the sun, um, and it doesn't have as much elasticity to it. Well, we can create the precursor to elastin, um, which is a water-soluble version of elastin, which can be delivered in many different ways, whether it be to print scaffoldings or inject it into a skin. Um, and that's what many of our future technologies are, are designed after, is being able to uh, basically print different tissue scaffoldings and then seed them with your own cells, um, and then also use it in our future generation fluid uh, to bring back elasticity to things like skin, blood vessels, um, uh, and different tissue types and so you'll notice as you age when you lose elastin you wrinkle your blood pressure goes up you have sports injuries because your tendons and ligaments don't have the same recoil um, you know all, all of these things are just result a result of losing elastin over time it's part of the pathology of age so the, from a layman's point of view you're actually benefiting the entire body not just your face or your if, if, if your hips, your 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 legs, or whatever it is, from what I'm yeah. getting from that. Yes, yes, very much so. We're able to benefit any tissue type that we're trying to address. So you can inject 
uh, in the local area or in the future when we have these scaffoldings, you can place a scaffolding. Uh, you know, one of our uh, big developments is being able to print a, a blood vessel, um, being able to, that is a perfect match, no rejection from the patient because it's their own cells within that scaffolding. And the proteins used in that scaffolding are universal for all, all living beings. Now, I would also think the natural progression is wound care. Oh yeah, wound care is something we're in already. That's We have two wound care products currently, and one's a fluid, the other is a membrane. So we take the amnion lining of a placenta and we extract the cells from it, um, and then grow those off in an incubator and capture the cellular communication. That's what makes our, our condition uh, fluid. Uh, but then we also have uh, that decellularized membrane is then dehydrated and we create both a dual graph and a single layer membrane for ease of use for the physician. Um, and that membrane is able to have have um, cellular uptake into it and be able to close wounds that have been ongoing for years and years and years. We can we can close wounds that um, have been ongoing for 12 years or more uh, in a matter of weeks. What? Yeah, it's pretty cool. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. It's the difference between life and death, too, because most people that have an amputation due to a diabetic foot ulcer uh, only live two to five years after amputation, which is really tragic. That's almost worse than a cancer diagnosis, and we can save that limb by closing a wound. Wow. That's... Yeah. Okay. Um, that You just got me off my chair. I, I mean... All right, you're first to market with ambient temperature um, amniotic-derived uh, fluids. So talk to me about that. Yeah, so we're, we're first to market with the ambient temperature product. Um, most of our competitors had tried a amni amniotic uh, shelf-stable product, which is actually just lyophilized or freeze-dehydrated and micronized uh, powder. Um, and it doesn't work very well, right? Because you're denaturing those proteins by freezing, fa fra fast freezing them and then grinding them up. Um, we're actually able to keep it in a fluid form and be able to use a proprietary process to be able to maintain the same properties in a fluid state. And we're not trying to promote live cells because the cells don't really, aren't really the active ingredient in all of this. It's the growth factors, the proteins that are produced by the cells. Impressive. Um, just, to, just to kind of summarize, summarize it up, because there's, we could go on for hours with this. I'm very, very in tune and enthused with this. But I got to ask you a couple of real quick questions. Number one, your most important product. Most important product. Yeah, the one. That um, the one I'm most proud of is our fluid. I mean, the membrane is extraordinary and everything, but the fluid that we've generated can really have impact in multiple different tissue types um, and it can bring back hope. You know, if you've ever experienced someone that, been around someone that's been experiencing a great deal of pain, um, one of the side effects is depression, anxiety, just the loss of hope, right? Um, and so, um, we're able to help regenerate these tissues and a symptom, you know, when we regener regenerate a tissue, one of the symptoms is it's pain, there's pain relief. Um, and so whether it be curing uh, or treating uh, diabetic neuropathies or um, joint pain or uh, osteoarthritis, so on and so forth, then um, you're able to then regenerate those tissues and have people regain hope and be out, be able to uh, have pain relief and be able to save their limbs. Like I said before, um, the, the membrane patch alone uh, is great, but adding the fluid really helps. So it, it's just a very versatile tool in a physician's uh, toolbox. It also seems like a very preventative medicine process too, if you get to it before there is an injury or before there's a disease that takes hold. Yeah, one of our taglines is be preventative, go regenerative. Um, and so, you know, if you look at your uh, the cartilage and say your knee, perhaps, um, it's kind of like the discs on your disc brakes on your car, right? Um, you know, if you start wearing it down and you replace the brake pads uh, before they ever start grinding, you won't have to get new rotors. But if you wait until you're grinding on the rotor, you're 
you're going to have to get new rotors. And if you let that go on too long, you're going to have to get new calipers too, because you overheat the calipers. So, um, you know, if you can do some preventative maintenance by regenerating some of the cartilage using this fluid, um, then you can prevent having to have knee surgery. And so, yeah, it's all, all very exciting. Um, Where'd you get the name? So my wife is from Mexico City, actually, um, and the Mexican salamander is the most regenerative creature known to man, and it's native to Mexico City. And uh, my wife, when I was having a brainstorming session with my uh, business partner, we're trying to find regenerative creatures, and we're talking about uh, everything from lizards to starfish, and she's like, why why not the axolotl? And, and we're like, that's just too hard to say. And she's like, but people will remember it because it's so hard to say. And so we thought, let's give it a try. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty neat. It is great. What about these clinical trials that you have going across the country? So we're starting up a clinical trial. All regenerative medicine companies, if they want to stay in business in 2020, have to start uh, clinical trials um, because there's a shift in the regulatory guidelines uh, for for our industry. And so we're trying to get ahead of the curve. We have to submit those, uh, submit something to the FDA by 2020, but we're doing that process now. Uh, we wanna be on the best, on our best behavior and get along with the FDA. Um, but we also want evidence-based medicine. So we're, we're really focused on uh, foot and ankle right now um, due to the fact that we've seen amazing results uh, with, with our fluid product in the foot and ankle, everything from, um, you know, uh, plantar fasciitis to reducing uh, the symptoms of diabetic neuropathies and also even increasing cartilage uh, in uh, the joint space within the ankle. Um, and these are all things that physicians came to us with. So right now, our claims that we can make, our FDA label claims that we can make are regeneration and repair of tissues, which is very general and broad. All these different things that I've been talking about that have been being treated with our product are all just thing, feedback that we're getting from the physicians. They're telling us, hey, we've been doing this and these are the results we're getting. So we've been treating ankle, uh, we've been treating the ankle space uh, in the joint space and we've been seeing regeneration of cartilage. Uh, you know, um, everything from uh, tendinopathy to cosmetics, right? So um, those aren't actual label claims we have, it's just repair and re regeneration of tissue. And as we do these clinical trials, it allows us to then get more specific on those claims and uh, make some bold statements. Brilliant. Are you, um, not, you're not gener you're not post revenue yet because you're going through these trials, but are you accepting investors in the company? So we are accepting uh, investors, but we are at revenue. So we're regulation 361 products. So we're uh, able to sell under the claims of repair and regeneration of tissue, um, not you know osteo treating osteoarthritis. That can be the doctors can kind of say, yeah, well, if this repairs and regenerates tissue and the study over here says that uh, they're seeing a thick the thickening of the cartilage, uh, then doctors will oftentimes do that. But we do have product to revenue, uh, product to market. Um, and we're even um, looking at trying to get onto the GSA contract within the next month or so. I'd love to be a part of that growth path. Um, We've got to run now, but I, I want you to come back and talk to me more in depth in future interviews about what the, the, the success stories are that you have going forward, not just what you're doing with the business, but what you're doing for humanity with some of the people that you're helping as you go forward. Yeah, and we're really excited about the things we're doing. Um, right now, our big focus is in uh, Indian country because they have the highest propensity for uh, diabetes in the world, especially one of the tribes here locally, which is the Gila River um, Indians. And, you know, we're really thrilled and excited to be able to be saving limbs and lives uh, and being able to, to combat um, not only the opiate crisis, but also um, the diabetic epidemic. Absolutely. Great work. All right, Philip, thanks for being a guest on the show. Don't hang up. I want to talk to you offline. All right. Outstanding. Thank you. You're welcome. You've been watching CEO Money with Michael Yorba. Thanks for joining us. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.